Hello and welcome to my channel. <clears throat> what I'm looking at at the moment is setting the parameters for LoRa for mesh type radio communications for mesh tastic or for uh, reticulum. And um, in the EU and the UK, a frequency where this is permitted is on 869.525 megahertz, which is the setting here in the uh, the R node setting. <clears throat> this is a reticulum mesh chat. And that's the frequency I'm looking at here on this spectrum display um, from an SDR receiver. If you haven't seen one before, the horizontal axis is uh, frequency centered on that frequency, and the vertical axis is time with uh, time flowing away downwards. So you can see into history. And um, the spreading factor and coding rate that's currently popular is 10 and 5 respectively. And so I've set those. And the R node has a, a dummy load attached, just a, um, in fact, an attenuator to dissipate the power, but not actually radiate very much power. Although, as you can see, I can see signals that's <clears throat> actually coming from an R node outside that I'm running on the same frequency. Anyway, um, what I'm concerned about is the length of time it takes to send a burst of data. This is an announce packet, probably. What I'm going to do is manually send an announce packet here by <clears throat> clicking on announce now. And you can see, yeah, it's more orange color, the slightly weaker signal. That's the one I'm testing here. And you can see how long it took. That's probably half a second <coughs> that announced back. And I haven't measured the time. Um, and data packets containing text messages, of course, will be split up into packets like this. Also, images and voice you can send with reticulum. And quite quickly, this channel <coughs> gets filled up with packets or bursts of data. And... Uh, so, of course, it might be interesting to play with these these settings here <clears throat> to reduce the time duration of the bursts. But, of course, there will be a penalty for this because um, there are a number of uh, factors that depend on these um, parameters. As we'll see, if we look at this uh, table, <clears throat> which I've got from the Internet, various websites, um, the Meshtastic website plus others, and also by playing with the settings in the software itself, <clears throat> you can see that what I was doing there was a spreading factor of 10 and a coding rate of 5. Always I'm doing this with 250 kilohertz bandwidth because that's the bandwidth of the channel at that frequency I showed you. <clears throat> that's uh, allowed to be used, maximum bandwidth. And with 10 and 5, you get a data rate <clears throat> of 2 kilobits per second. Perhaps I should let you see this heading. DR, data rate in kilobits per second, is 2 kilobits per second, which is enough to send short text messages and <clears throat> this gives a link budget of 150 dB so that means that the, the path loss from one end of the link to the other can be up to 150 dB and you'll just be out, about be able to receive a signal. As what I'm going to do is keep the, um, the coding rate the same all the time. If you increase this coding rate it just adds more bits and then those bits can be used for error correction to give more reliable communications but of course that also increases the time duration of a data burst. So with 10 <coughs> for a sp spreading factor you'd have 150 dBs link bit budget as I said and what I want to do is to reduce the numbers up this way of spreading factor which will give shorter bursts as we'll see um, but of course the penalty you pay is a, 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 a less desirable link budget <coughs> so if I set it to spreading factor of 8 We'll see what happens, and just remember the link budget is less. The advantage is the data rate's higher, that's tripled to 6 kilohertz. So um, spreading factor of 8, let's do that right now. <clears throat> the way to do it with the mesh chat program is to, this is a rack node by the way, you go into edit the parameters, and spreading factor 8, everything else stays the same. I've also got in the... Uh, parameters here, <coughs> optional R node interface settings, I've set the uh, maximum duty cycle of 10%, which is what you're allowed to use if there's a uh, listen before transmit protocol operating, which there is in the software. <coughs> so um, I've set that to 8, so let's save it, and you get the warning that you have to restart in order to implement it, so let's do restart, and then to restart it, this is on Ubuntu Linux, the way to restart it is just to issue the command again, <coughs> this command to run the program. So that should start up again. There it is. And let's make it a bit smaller, unfortunately. Oh, well, it's not Ubuntu, it's Linux Mint. Very similar, but it doesn't remember the uh, window size setting on that program anyway. <coughs> so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send an announce packet again. And you see it's got much shorter in time. It's about a half or even a third of the time interval. Let's do it again. 
so it's, it's quicker and this means that you could fit more users into this same 250 kilohertz wide channel. <clears throat> Let's just um, change it again. That's that's the, the other node I've got here, which is still set at a spreading factor of 10. You can see how much longer that is than this. Anyway, let's go and change it again, just for fun to see what happens. So we go to Interfaces and then Edit, which is in here. And I'm going to change the spreading factor to the minimum, which is 5. This is a time spreading factor, by the way, not a spectrum spreading factor. And the frequency domain, it spreads in time, apparently. <clears throat> so that's the minimum spreading factor now, 5. Save it and say OK. And then restart. And then I have to go here to restart the program, which it will do. Taking a bit longer, of course, because I'm recording a video, everybody's watching. <laughs> yeah, okay, there it is. <clears throat> so now let's uh, resize it a little bit so it doesn't overlap with the spectrum display. So remember, now I've got the shortest spreading factor, which is 5. And now we're going to test <clears throat> by sending a, an announce packet and see how long that is in time duration. So let me just check it really has changed. Yeah, five. If you don't restart, then it shows the settings you set, but it doesn't implement them until you restart the program. <clears throat> so you have to know that. Anyway, let's do an announce and see what happens. Well, there it is. You see the announce packet now is uh, very, very short in time. Let's do another one. Oop, very quick. And I've been experimenting with sending and receiving data with those sorts of short bursts and it works extremely well of course with a much higher data rate and um, if we look at the data rate with five spreading factor then it's 31 kilobits per second which is uh, 15 times more than with the 10 and 5 parameters i had set before <clears throat> so uh, you can send small images and, and voice clips much faster than previously but the downside of course is the link budget is rather less and i didn't actually find the figures that fit in here maybe uh, you know what the numbers are. I didn't look too hard. So um, it's certainly going to be less than the link budgets up here, which means that if the nodes are closer together or antennas are better, then it shouldn't matter. <clears throat> but if you're right on the edge of the link budget from one node to another, which I am with a friend here, then um, probably we won't be able to communicate with these settings because the, the link budget's just too low. But uh, we'll give it a try sometime, see what happens. So let's just go back to uh, what I was looking at, which is this. and just do one more announce. There you can see how fast that is. <clears throat> and I see a lot of uh, users in this 868 ISM band that have very p fast packets like this or even faster. And one advantage is that um, when they're below a certain length, which I can't remember, then you... Uh, oh no, that's in other countries. <clears throat> you don't have to have this um, duty cycle limit. Um, in fact, you don't do listen before send and the, the limit's 1%, not 10%. Anyway, the channel is much less clogged up with short packets like this, so there's a room for a lot more users to be sending data. Because as it is when there's 10 and 5 of settings here, if you have three users communicating, then the channel's pretty much full. It's chock-a-block, solid data packets in time. So that's all I want to say for now. Look forward to reading your comments, suggestions, and perhaps any experiments you might have tried with different uh, parameter settings and questions, and I'll see you in the next video.